Welcome to Drive TV. In the world of American pickup trucks, there have been legends that have stood the test of time, revered for their power, performance, and ruggedness. But for every success story, there's a cautionary tale, a truck that missed the mark and fell short of expectations. Today, we're diving deep into the realm of pickups to uncover the 15 worst American pickup trucks that should have never existed. Join us as we explore the depths of disappointment and unearth the stories behind these infamous vehicles. We'll be counting down the 15 worst American pickups that left us scratching our heads and wondering, what were they thinking? From failed experiments to misguided ventures, these trucks have earned a reputation for all the wrong reasons. But fear not, fellow truck lovers, for in our exploration of the worst, we'll also uncover valuable lessons and insights into what makes a truly great pickup truck. Remember, these pickup trucks are undeniably amazing. It doesn't necessarily mean they should never have existed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay tuned for more truck content. Let's get started! In the annals of American automotive history, few names resonate quite like the Ford F-Series. Revered for its durability and timeless design, the F-Series has been a cornerstone of the pickup truck world for generations. However, even the mighty have stumbled, and as we kick off our countdown of the worst 15 American pickup trucks, we begin with an unexpected contender. The early models of the Ford F-100 introduced in the 1950s. The Ford F-100 promised rugged utility and dependable performance. but. Beneath its iconic exterior lurked a host of issues that plagued these early iterations. From unreliable engines to subpar handling, the early F100S struggled to live up to the lofty expectations set by their Ford brethren. With limited features and a reputation for rust, these trucks left much to be desired on the open road. These early F100S boasted a rugged design with distinctive features like the classic round headlights and bold grille instantly recognizable on roads and job sites across the country. Under the hood, drivers could find a range of inline six and V8 engines, providing ample power for hauling and towing Ford marketed the F100 as a versatile workhorse, equally at home on the farm or in the city. With options for various bed lengths, cab styles, and engine choices, buyers could tailor their F100 to suit their specific needs. However, despite its initial popularity, the early Ford F100S were not without their flaws. Many owners reported issues with reliability, especially with the early engine design. Rust was also a common problem, particularly in regions with harsh climates. Over the years, Ford addressed many of these issues with subsequent generations of the F-Series lineup, refining and improving upon the original design. Despite its shortcomings, the Ford F-100 remains an important chapter in the storied history of American pickups, paving the way for the legendary trucks that would follow Heil the early Ford F-100 may not have been perfect. Its legacy endures as a symbol of American ingenuity and craftsmanship. Join us as we continue our journey through the worst 30 American pickup trucks, uncovering the high Highs and lows of truck history, stick around for more insights into the world of pickups right here on our channel. The Willys Jeep truck occupies a unique space in the landscape of American pickups. Born out of the rugged utility of the iconic Jeep brand, these trucks were designed to tackle the toughest terrain with ease. Introduced in the 1940s, the Willys Jeep truck was a departure from the traditional pickup designs of the era. With its compact size and utilitarian styling, it stood out as a versatile workhorse, equally at home on the farm or the battlefield. One of the key selling points of the Willys Jeep truck was its off-road prowess. Built on the same rugged platform as the legendary Willys MB Jeep, these trucks were engineered to conquer mud, rocks, and snow with ease. However, despite its rugged reputation, the Willys Jeep truck was not without its flaws. Many owners reported issues with reliability, particularly with the early engine designs. The sparse interior lacked the comfort and amenities found in competing trucks of the time. Over the years, the Willys Jeep truck underwent several revisions and updates, with improvements made to address some of its shortcomings. However, it never quite reached the same level of popularity as its competitors from Ford and Chevrolet. While the Willys Jeep truck may have fallen short in some areas, its legacy lives on as a symbol of American innovation and adventure. Join us as we continue our journey through the worst 30 American pickup trucks, exploring the highs and lows of truck history. Early models of the Willys Jeep truck were reported to have reliability issues, particularly with the engine. 
These issues could lead to frequent breakdowns and costly repairs, making the truck less dependable compared to its competitors. While the Willys Jeep truck was renowned for its off-road capabilities, it may have fallen short in terms of on-road performance. The engine power and handling may not have been as impressive as competing trucks, limiting its appeal for everyday use. The Willys Jeep truck had its strengths, such as ruggedness and off-road capability. It also had significant drawbacks that could lead some to consider it one of the worst American pick up trucks. The Studebaker M-Series trucks, produced by the Studebaker Corporation from 1941 to 1948, represented a significant contribution to the American pickup truck market during a pivotal era in automotive history. In the pre- and post-war years, Studebaker aimed to capitalize on the growing demand for utility vehicles, and the M-Series was their answer. These trucks were designed to be rugged, reliable, and versatile, catering to the needs of farmers, tradespeople, and small businesses across the nation. One of the standout features of the Studebaker M-Series was its distinctive design. With its rounded fenders, streamlined grill, and Art Deco-inspired styling, the M-Series trucks were ahead of their time in terms of aesthetics inside. The Studebaker M-Series offered a comfortable and functional cabin with seating for two or three passengers depending on the model. While lacking some of the modern conveniences found in today's pickups, the interior of the M-Series was well appointed for its time. Despite its strengths, the Studebaker M-Series faced challenges that ultimately led to its downfall. In the competitive post-war market, larger automakers like Ford and Chevrolet dominated sales, making it difficult for Studebaker to gain traction. While the Studebaker M-Series may not have achieved the same level of commercial success as its competitors, its legacy lives on as a testament to American innovation and craftsmanship. While the Studebaker M-Series had a stylish design and some innovative features for its time, it was often criticized for its lack of durability and reliability. Many owners reported issues with mechanical mechanical failures, rust, and overall build quality leading to frequent repairs and maintenance. Despite its unique design and features, the Studebaker M-Series struggled to compete with larger automakers like Ford and Chevrolet. Its limited sales and market reception contributed to its reputation as one of the worst American pickup trucks. The Studebaker M-Series had some unique qualities and historical significance. Its shortcomings in terms of durability, performance, sales, and parts availability have led many to consider it one of the worst American pickup trucks. The Jeep FC was unlike any other pickup truck on the market, featuring a cab over engine design that pushed the cab forward over the front axle. This unique layout maximized cargo space while maintaining a compact footprint, making it ideal for maneuvering in tight spaces and off-road terrain. One of the defining features of the Jeep FC was its versatility, available in various configurations including pickups, chassis cabs, and even fire trucks. The FC series was adaptable to a wide range of applications, from utility work to emergency services. Inside, the Jeep FC offered a utilitarian yet functional cabin with seating for two or three passengers depending on the model. While lacking some of the creature comforts found in other pickups of the era, the FC's interior was designed for practicality and durability. Despite its innovative design and capabilities, the Jeep FC faced challenges that limited its commercial success. Its unconventional appearance and layout may have been too radical for some consumers, leading to lower sales compared to more traditional pickup trucks. While the Jeep FC may not have achieved widespread popularity during its production run, it remains a beloved and iconic vehicle among enthusiasts and collectors. The Jeep FC was powered by relatively small engines, which may have resulted in underwhelming performance, especially when hauling heavy loads or driving on rough terrain. This could limit its practicality for certain tasks compared to trucks with larger, more powerful engines. Despite its innovative design and capabilities, the Jeep FC struggled to gain widespread acceptance in the pickup truck market. Lower sales and limited commercial success may be indicators of its status as one of the worst American and pickup trucks. The FC had some unique qualities and capabilities. Its unconventional design, limited comfort and amenities, handling challenges, and limited commercial success contribute to its reputation as one of the worst American pickup trucks.
Next on our list, we have the Ford Econoline pickup. Introduced in 1961, was part of Ford's revolutionary Econoline lineup, which aimed to provide a compact and efficient solution for commercial and personal transportation needs. As part of the Econoline family, the pickup variant shared its platform with the Econoline van, featuring a forward control design with the engine positioned between the front seats. This configuration allowed for a compact exterior footprint while maximizing cargo space. The Ford Econoline pickup was was marketed as a versatile and practical solution for small businesses, tradespeople, and individuals seeking an efficient and maneuverable vehicle. With its compact size and tight turning radius, it was well suited for navigating city streets and crowded job sites. Inside, the Ford Econoline pickup offered a functional yet basic cabin, with seating for two or three passengers depending on the configuration. While lacking some of the creature comforts found in larger pickup trucks, the Econoline pickup prioritized utility and efficiency despite its practicality. The Ford Econoline pickup had its drawbacks. The forward control design resulted in a cramped and noisy driving experience, with the engine located directly beneath the driver's seat. This could be uncomfortable for long journeys or extended periods of use. While the Ford Econoline pickup may not have achieved the same level of popularity as some of Ford's other truck offerings, its unique design and practicality have earned it a dedicated fan base among enthusiasts and collectors due to its compact size and lightweight construction. The Ford Econoline pickup had relatively limited payload and towing capacities compared to other, larger pickup trucks of its era. This could limit its usefulness for heavy-duty work or hauling large loads. The forward control design of the Econoline pickup resulted in a cramped and noisy driving experience for the driver and passengers. With the engine located directly beneath the driver's seat, there was increased noise, heat, and vibration, making long journeys or extended periods of use uncomfortable. The unique design of the Econoline pickup, with its engine positioned between the front seats, could lead to handling and stability issues, especially at higher speeds or when carrying heavy loads. This could make the vehicle less safe and less predictable to drive compared to other other pickup trucks. The Ford Econoline pickup had some innovative features and practical applications. Its limitations in terms of payload and towing capacity, driving experience, comfort and amenities, handling and stability, and market appeal contribute to its reputation as one of the worst American pickup trucks. Chevrolet Colorado, because it is smaller than a conventional half-ton truck, the Chevy Colorado might seem like the good choice for anyone who doesn't plan on towing with their pickup. It's more fuel-efficient, less expensive, and easier to handle than other trucks on the market. However, not everything is hunky-dory with the Colorado. First, two model years, 2004 and 2005, were plagued by numerous problems including an AC heater system that only works on high or not at all. Additionally, these models are known to have an engine start failure and be plagued by a check engine light that's constantly on. Some consumers have reported water leaking into the cab, a warning sign that some of these used trucks might now have a rusted frame or other issues from water damage. Similarly, the 2008 year model has had its share of similar issues with the troublesome addition of an easily fried electrical system and a faulty radiator which resulted in temperature fluctuations in the engine. As if that wasn't enough, all of the 2004 to 2011 Colorados were subject to a recall for a faulty child seat and faulty brake light. Finally the 2015 Chevy Colorado has been reported to be experiencing numerous transmission problems, including sluggish shifting or even a complete failure to downshift. This model also has the random engine stall issue too. All things considered, you might want to avoid the 2015 Colorado altogether. The Colorado is known for its sturdy construction and robust frame, making it well suited for heavy duty tasks encountered in work environments. The Colorado is known for its sturdy construction and robust frame, making it well suited for heavy duty tasks encountered in work environments. The Colorado comes in various configurations, including different bed lengths and cab styles, providing versatility to accommodate different work needs. Chevrolet has a reputation for building reliable vehicles, and the Colorado is no exception. The Ford Pinto pickup is a notable addition to automotive history, but for reasons many would rather forget. 
Introduced in 1971, the Pinto pickup was essentially a pickup version of the infamous Ford Pinto compact car. While the Pinto car itself gained notoriety due to safety concerns related to its fuel tank design, the pickup variant didn't fare much better. One of the most significant issues with the Ford Pinto pickup was its safety record. Like the Pinto car, the pickup version was plagued by concerns regarding its fuel system. The placement of the fuel tank in the rear, between the rear axle and the rear bumper made it particularly vulnerable in rear-end collisions. This design flaw meant that even low-speed impacts could lead to catastrophic fuel tank ruptures and fires, posing a serious risk to occupants. The safety concerns surrounding the Pinto pickup eventually led to a scandal for Ford. Internal documents revealed that the company knew about the safety issues, but chose not to address them due to cost concerns. The resulting lawsuits, investigations, and negative publicity tarnished Ford's reputation and led to significant financial losses. Beyond safety concerns, the Ford Pinto pickup also faced criticism for its design and performance. Compared to other pickups of its time, it offered limited payload capacity and towing capability. Additionally, its boxy design and lackluster performance failed to impress consumers, further contributing to its lack of popularity in the market. Ultimately, the Ford Pinto pickup is remembered as a cautionary tale in automotive history, highlighting the importance of prioritizing safety in vehicle design and manufacturing. Despite its flaws, it serves as a reminder of the consequences that can arise when profit motives outweigh concerns for consumer safety. Let's delve into the Chevrolet Lovi light utility vehicle, which was a collaboration between Chevrolet and Isuzu, marketed under various names worldwide. Introduced to the US market in the 1970s, the LUV aimed to capitalize on the growing demand for compact trucks due to their economical appeal. One of the Chevrolet LUV's notable challenges was its struggle with durability. Despite its intended utility, the LUV often fell short in terms of longevity. Many owners reported issues with rust and corrosion, particularly in regions with harsh weather conditions. This susceptibility to rust not only affected the truck's appearance, but also compromised its structural integrity over time. Performance-wise, the LUV offered modest capabilities, thanks to its small displacement four-cylinder engines. While these engines provided decent fuel efficiency, they lacked the power needed for heavy-duty tasks like towing or hauling significant loads. This limited the truck's appeal to buyers who required more robust performance from their vehicles. In terms of features and and comfort, the Chevrolet Louv lagged behind its competitors. The interior lacked the amenities and refinement found in other trucks of its era. Basic comforts were often absent, resulting in a less than pleasant driving experience for occupants. Additionally, the sparse equipment levels further diminished the truck's appeal to discerning buyers. Rust and corrosion were persistent issues for the LUV affecting not only its appearance, but also its structural integrity. The prevalence of rust in critical areas posed safety concerns and contributed to diminished resale value over time. Despite its collaboration with Isuzu, the Chevrolet LUV faced fierce competition from Japanese rivals offering superior build quality and reliability. Models like the Toyota Hilux and Nissan Datsun pickup outshone the LUV in terms of performance, durability, and overall value, leading to its eventual decline in popularity. In summary, while the Chevrolet LUV aimed to offer a practical and economical compact truck option, it struggled to overcome its durability issues, lackluster performance, and stiff competition from more refined rivals. These factors ultimately led to its inclusion on lists of the worst pickup trucks of all time. Introduced in 1971, the GMC Sprint was marketed as a utility vehicle, offering the versatility of both a car and a truck. It shared its platform with the Chevrolet El Camino and was essentially a rebadged version of the Chevrolet model. The GMC Sprint's compact size makes it maneuverable in urban environments and tight job sites, allowing it to access areas that larger trucks may struggle to reach. This agility is advantageous for contractors and workers who navigate crowded streets or narrow workspaces. Compared to larger full-size pickup trucks, the GMC Sprint typically offers better fuel efficiency, reducing operating costs for businesses and individuals who rely on their vehicles for work-related transportation. This can be especially beneficial for those who frequently travel long distances or make multiple stops throughout the day. The GMC Sprint's simplified mechanical systems and components make it relatively easy to maintain and repair. This aspect is appealing to small business owners and independent contractors who may perform their vehicle maintenance or rely on local mechanics for service. 
The availability of affordable replacement parts further contributes to the vehicle's suitability for work purposes. The GMC Sprint's design allows for easy customization and modification to accommodate specific work needs. From adding racks and shelving in the cargo bed to installing specialized equipment or toolboxes, the vehicle can be tailored to suit a wide range of professions and industries, including construction, plumbing, electrical work, and landscaping. Despite being a work truck, the GMC Sprint often retains its resale value well, particularly when properly maintained. This factor is advantageous for businesses and individuals who may eventually upgrade to newer vehicles or sell their existing ones. A higher resale value can help offset the initial investment and contribute to overall cost savings over the vehicle's life cycle. The GMC Sprint's compact size, fuel efficiency, ease of maintenance, adaptability, and resale value contribute to its classification as a work pickup truck in the U.S., making it a practical choice for a wide range of professional applications. The GMC S15 was introduced in 1982 as a successor to the GMC S15 Jimmy Compact SUV. It was part of the S-Series lineup of trucks produced by General Motors, which also included the Chevrolet S10. Similar to other pickup trucks, the GMC S15 features a cargo bed at the rear, providing ample space for transporting tools, equipment, and materials essential for various work tasks. This utility aspect makes it well-suited for industries such as construction, landscaping, and agriculture. The GMC S15 offers a combination of passenger comfort and cargo carrying capability, allowing it to serve both personal and work-related purposes. Its versatile design makes it suitable for commuting during the week and tackling work projects on the weekends. Built with a sturdy frame and reliable components, the GMC S15 is designed to withstand the demands of daily use in rugged work environments. Its durable construction ensures it can handle heavy loads and rough terrain, making it a dependable choice for professionals who rely on their vehicles for work. The GMC S15 is equipped with capable engines and drivetrains that deliver sufficient power and towing capacity for a variety of work applications. Its performance capabilities make it suitable for hauling trailers, carrying payloads, and navigating challenging job sites with ease. Like other pickup trucks, the GMC S15 can be customized to meet specific work requirements. Optional features such as bed liners, toolboxes, and towing packages enhance its functionality and adaptability, allowing users to tailor the vehicle to suit their individual needs. The GMC S15's combination of utility, versatility, durability, performance, and customization options makes it a practical and reliable choice for professionals and businesses in need of a capable work pickup truck in the U.S. The GMC Caballero was introduced in 1978 as a variant of the Chevrolet El Camino. Like the El Camino, it was classified as a coupe utility vehicle, combining the styling of a car with the utility of a pickup truck. The GMC Caballero was offered with a range of engine options, including inline six and V8 engines, providing a balance of power and efficiency. These engines were paired with either manual or automatic transmissions. The GMC Caballero, along with the Chevrolet El Camino, was popular among consumers who wanted a vehicle that offered the comfort and styling of a car with the versatility of a pickup truck. It appealed to a wide range of buyers, including contractors, small business owners, and individuals with active lifestyles. While the GMC Caballero had its appeal and unique design, it also faced criticism and challenges that contributed to its reputation as one of the worst vehicles in certain contexts. Here are some reasons why the GMC Caballero might be considered as such. Despite having a cargo bed like a pickup truck, the GMC Caballero's design limited its practicality for heavy-duty work tasks. Its smaller size and lower payload capacity compared to traditional pickup trucks made it less suitable for demanding work environments. The GMC Caballero faced competition from both traditional pickup trucks and car-based vehicles, such as station wagons and SUVs. In a market where consumers had a wide range of choices, the Caballero struggled to carve out a distinct niche for itself. The Caballero's design, which aimed to blend the styling of a car with the utility of a truck, didn't always resonate with consumers. 
Some found its appearance to be unconventional or awkward, especially compared to more traditional pickup truck designs. Like many vehicles of its era, the GMC Caballero may have been subject to reliability and performance issues as it aged. This could include issues related to engine performance, transmission reliability, and overall durability. The discontinuation of the GMC Caballero and similar vehicles like the Chevrolet El Camino after the 1987 model year could be seen as a reflection of declining popularity or sales. Changes in consumer preferences, shifting market trends, and stricter regulations may have contributed to the decision to end production. The Chevrolet SSR Super Sport Roadster was a unique vehicle that blended elements of a pickup truck with those of a convertible sports car. Despite its distinctive design and innovative features, the Chevrolet SSR faced criticism and challenges that contributed to its reputation as one of the worst vehicles in certain contexts. Here are some reasons why the Chevrolet SSR might be considered as such. The Chevrolet SSR featured a retro-inspired design with a retractable hardtop roof, giving it the appearance of a classic hot rod. The Chevrolet SSR was manufactured from 2003 to 2006. This relatively short production span contributes to its rarity and uniqueness in the automotive market. Despite its limited production run, the Chevrolet SSR left a lasting impression with its distinctive design and innovative features, making it a memorable part of automotive history. While some found its styling appealing, others considered it polarizing or overly gimmicky, which could deter potential buyers. Despite its pickup truck-inspired cargo bed, the Chevrolet SSR had limited practicality for hauling cargo or towing compared to traditional pickup trucks. Its smaller cargo area and reduced payload capacity made it less suitable for heavy-duty work tasks. While the Chevrolet SSR offered powerful V8 engine options, some critics felt that its performance didn't live up to its sporty appearance vehicle's weight and handling characteristics may have compromised its agility and responsiveness, especially when compared to dedicated sports cars. The Chevrolet SSR was positioned as a premium vehicle with a correspondingly high price tag. Some consumers felt that the vehicle didn't offer enough value for the cost, especially considering its limited utility and performance relative to other vehicles in its price range. The Chevrolet SSR's niche appeal as a convertible pickup truck may have limited its market potential. While it attracted a dedicated fan base, its unconventional design and high price may have deterred mainstream buyers who preferred more practical or traditional vehicles. Despite initial excitement and anticipation surrounding its launch, the Chevrolet SSR's sales performance was disappointing. Slow sales and production difficulties led to its discontinuation after only a few years on the market, which could be interpreted as a reflection of its limited appeal or viability as a mass market vehicle. The Chevrolet SSR had its unique attributes and enthusiastic supporters, it also faced challenges and criticisms that contributed to its reputation as one of the worst vehicles in certain contexts. Perceptions of the vehicle may vary depending on individual preferences, needs, and experiences. The Chevrolet S10 Blazer, introduced in 1983, was a compact SUV that quickly captured the hearts of American consumers. As part of the S-Series lineup, it shared its platform with the Chevrolet S10 pickup truck, embodying ruggedness, versatility, and reliability in a stylish package. Available initially as a two-door model, the S10 Blazer offered a perfect balance between urban practicality and off-road capability. Its compact size made it ideal for navigating city streets, while options four-wheel drive ensured it could conquer rough terrain with ease. Under the hood, the S10 Blazer be boasted a range of engine options, from fuel-efficient inline fours to powerful V6 engines, providing drivers with ample power for any adventure. The Chevrolet S10 Blazer was a popular SUV produced by General Motors under the Chevrolet brand. The Chevrolet S10 Blazer is not typically regarded as one of the worst American pickup trucks. However, like any vehicle, it had its drawbacks and limitations which could contribute to negative perceptions in certain contexts. Here are some reasons why the S10 Blazer might be criticized. Some owners experienced reliability issues with the S10 Blazer, particularly with older models. Common problems included engine and transmission issues, as well as electrical and suspension problems, which could lead to costly repairs. Older models of the S10 Blazer may not have had the same level of safety features and crash test ratings as more modern vehicles. This could be a concern for some buyers, especially those prioritizing 
prioritizing safety when choosing a vehicle. While the S10 Blazer offered a range of engine options, including some fuel-efficient models, its overall fuel economy may not have been as impressive as newer SUVs. This could be a consideration for buyers looking to save on fuel costs. Compared to larger pickup trucks, the S10 Blazer's cargo space may have been limited, especially in two-door models. This could be a drawback for buyers needing to transport larger items or equipment. As the S10 Blazer aged, its design may have started to feel outdated compared to newer SUVs on the market. This could affect its appeal to buyers looking for a more modern and stylish vehicle. While the S10 Blazer offered optional four-wheel drive for off-road capability, some buyers may have found its performance lacking compared to dedicated off-road vehicles or larger SUVs. It's important to note that perceptions of the S10 Blazer as one of the worst American pickup trucks are subjective and may vary among different individuals and sources. Despite any criticisms, the S10 Blazer also had many positive qualities, including its versatility, ruggedness, and affordability, which made it a popular choice for many drivers during its production years. The Dodge Dakota, introduced in 1987, was a groundbreaking addition to the American pickup truck market. Positioned as a mid-size pickup, it bridged the gap between compact trucks and full-size pickups. While the Dodge Dakota had many positive attributes, it also faced criticisms and challenges that could contribute to its consideration as one of the worst American pickup trucks in certain contexts. Here are some reasons why the Dakota might be perceived negatively. Some owners reported reliability issues with the Dakota, particularly with earlier model years. Common problems included transmission issues, engine problems, electrical malfunctions, and suspension problems, which could lead to costly repairs and inconvenience for owners. Compared to smaller compact trucks, the Dakota's fuel efficiency may have been lower, especially with larger engine options. This could be a drawback for buyers looking to save on fuel costs, especially as gas prices fluctuated. The Dakota's ride quality could be criticized for being rough or harsh, particularly on rough roads or over bumps. This could affect passenger comfort, especially on longer trips. While the Dakota offered more hauling and towing capacity than smaller compact trucks, its larger size could make it less maneuverable in tight spaces, such as parking lots or urban environments. This could be a drawback for drivers who need to navigate crowded areas frequently. Some owners and reviewers criticized the Dakota's interior quality, citing issues such as cheap materials, uncomfortable seats, and outdated technology. This could affect the overall driving experience and satisfaction with the vehicle. The Dakota faced tough competition from other mid-size and full-size pickup trucks in the market, which offered similar capabilities and features. This could make it more challenging for the Dakota to stand out and attract buyers. The Dakota was eventually discontinued in 2011, which could be seen as a reflection of declining sales or market demand. This could raise questions about the vehicle's overall appeal and viability in the pickup truck market. It's important to note that perceptions of the Dakota as one of the worst American pickup trucks may vary among different individuals and sources. Despite any criticisms, the Dakota also had many positive qualities, including its towing and hauling capabilities, available V8 engine options, and versatility for both work and personal use. And finally on our list today at number 10, we have Jeep Comanche. It was produced by American automaker Jeep from 1986 to 1992. The Comanche was based on the Jeep Cherokee platform and offered both two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive configurations. It was available in various body styles, including a standard cab with a short bed and an extended cab with a long bed. The Jeep Comanche was well regarded for its ruggedness, off-road capability, and versatility, making it a popular choice among truck enthusiasts and outdoor adventurers. The Jeep Comanche, while a capable and versatile pickup truck, faced criticisms and challenges that could contribute to its consideration as one of the worst pickup trucks in certain contexts. Here are some reasons why the Jeep Comanche might be perceived negatively. Some owners experienced reliability issues with the Jeep Comanche, particularly with older models. Common problems included engine issues, transmission problems, electrical malfunctions, and suspension problems, which could lead to costly repairs and inconvenience for owners. Compared to more modern pickup trucks, the Jeep Comanche's fuel efficiency may have been lower, especially with larger engine options. This could be a drawback for buyers looking to save on fuel costs, especially as gas prices fluctuated. The Jeep Comanche's ride quality may have been criticized for being rough or harsh, particularly on rough roads or over bumps. This could affect passenger comfort, especially on longer trips. 
The Comanche's cargo bed may have been smaller compared to other pickup trucks in its class. This could be a drawback for buyers needing to transport larger items or equipment. Some owners and reviewers criticized the Comanche's interior quality, citing issues such as cheap materials, uncomfortable seats, and outdated technology. This could affect the overall driving experience and satisfaction with the vehicle. The Jeep Comanche was produced for a relatively short period from 1986 to 1992. Its limited availability may have made it less common on the used car market, affecting availability of parts and support for owners. The Comanche faced tough competition from other pickup trucks in the market, which offered similar capabilities and features. This could make it more challenging for the Comanche to stand out and attract buyers. The Comanche also had many positive qualities, including its ruggedness, off-road capability, and iconic Jeep styling, which made it a popular choice for many drivers during its production years. As we wrap up our countdown of the 10 worst pickup trucks in the US, we'd love to hear from you. Which of these trucks surprised you the most? Do you agree with our list, or do you have a different opinion? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video informative and entertaining, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.